They were in an upper chamber. They were all in one accord. When the Holy Ghost descended, as was promised by our Lord. Yeah. Sing it if you know it. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. Now, don't get nervous right there if you don't know it. You ought to know it. Anybody in this part of Virginia ought to know page 121 in the red book. I'm going to tell you something. We need the power of God. Don't worry about that word baptism. It's, it's, it's synonymous with filling. It's, it's not a dangerous word. It's not a Pentecostal word. It's a Bible believer's word. Listen at it one more time. They were in an upper chamber. They were all in one accord. When the Holy Ghost descended, as was promised by our Lord, if you know the chorus saying, Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. Y'all got that chorus, don't you now? Yes, this power from heaven descended with the sound of rushing wind. Tongues of fire came down upon him as the Lord said he would sin. Sing now, oh Lord, send the power just now. Oh Lord, send the power just now. Oh Lord, send the power just now and baptize everyone. Yes, this power from heaven was given to our fathers who were true. It is promised to believers, and we all may have it too. And, oh, Lord, send the power just sing now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. Sing the chorus. And, oh, Lord, send the power. You about to get it. Sing now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now and baptize everyone. No dispensational barrier is going to tie the power of God. Yes, this power from heaven was given to our fathers who were true. But it's promised to believers and we all may have it too. Sing with me now. Oh, Lord, send the power. Hey, man, sing. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. Sing it one more time. Oh, Lord, send the power. Yes, sing. Oh, yes. And, oh, Lord, send the power just now and baptize everyone. Exodus chapter number 25, page 100 in our Schofield Bible, if you've got one of those, page 100, chapter number 25. I appreciate the invitation to be here. And let me echo one thing. I, I normally use a little humor before I preach, but I feel the presence of God in here tonight. And I don't want to quench him. All God's people say it. But I, I do want you to thank the Lord for the receptive spirit of the pastor where I was to be. Uh, I mean, he, he was very, very cordial about it and said, I, if it was at our church, I'd want it that way. And so one of our younger preachers from Middle Tennessee Baptist Church preached for him tonight and tomorrow night. And you pray God's blessing on James Martin. Everybody say James Martin. And you pray God fill James Martin with the Holy Ghost and help that meeting there. And uh, we trust that the Lord will. Two verses tonight. Let's stand together. If you're able to stand, if you can't stand, let me help you about that. 
You don't have to stand to reverence God's Word or we couldn't listen to preaching on the radio. Amen. There's a Pharisaical spirit sometime that'll kill anything. The Bible said to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. It didn't say beware of the loaf of it. If it gets that big, it's already taken over the church. You've got to stamp out just that Phariseeism. I'm, I'm for separation. I'm for holiness. I'm for purity. I'm against everything. Y'all understand? If I thought I had a liberal bone in my body, I'd have it cut out. I'm so narrow-minded, I believe an act can stand on the bridge of my nose and kiss, kick both eyeballs at the same time. But I don't want to be a Pharisee. Beware of that leaven. See, the, watch out for that Phariseeism. I was preaching in a meeting up in the mountains some in North Georgia in Gainesville somewhere up there. And I announced the text. I started reading the text. Everybody jumped up and really just disturbed the text. What they was doing is trying to catch me doing something wrong. Like in Pharisees, your disciples didn't wash their hands before they ate, Jesus. We, we, we caught them. What they was trying to do was intimidate me because they so much more spiritual than I was. And they was going to catch me reading the text without asking them to stand. So going to, what they did was they, they, they distracted from the text. So I said, oh, hold on a minute. I said, y'all love standing for reading. I said, turn to Psalms 119. <laughs> the longest chapter in the Bible. And then they started grunting and groaning. Let me say something. That's, that's Pharisees. That's the Spirit. Right. Pharisees love titles. Pharisees, they, they rabbi, 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 yeah. rabbi. Watch out for that spirit. Uh, our movement hadn't got many doctors. No. Fundamentalism has very few earned doctors. Most of these doctors in front of these names are like a curl on a pig's tail. It don't make no more ham. Amen. <laughs> Honest to God. Most of these doctors, they, 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 they couldn't shake the mercury down on a thermometer because of a doctor. I, Hey, Y'all help me now. Yeah, but they like that title. Yeah, they like that title. The Pharisees, Pharisees like like uh, position. They like they like peck order. Yeah, yeah, I, was in, I was in a fellowship meeting not long ago, and all the preachers were there. And y'all know this area is full of fellowship meetings and churches convening. And, and one of the such so other preachers, are you full time or bivocational? L looking down on some younger preacher. And, you know, what they, they like, are you full-time? I thought everybody got saved was full-time. I didn't know it's such a part-time service. You get saved, you got saved, these kids are full-time. They, but they like that power. You know, I'm full-time. I'm, I'm, I'm quadruple vocational. I raise hogs, trade mules. Don't tell them, I ain't going to tell everything. Somebody say amen. But, uh. But y'all raise it around here too. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Is everybody okay? Yes, sir. And pastor church and do the work of an evangelist. Yeah, don't, 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 don't get that thing, I'm full time and you've got some kind of attitude. But that's, that's Phariseeism. Yes, amen. Yeah, we'll pick up tomorrow night on the remainder of that. So what I meant to say was if you can't stand, we're not going to look down on you. Right. Right. And we're going to honor God's word. Two verses tonight as a springboard into the message. And I know it's tired. Y'all been two weeks in meeting, and, and I'm nervous about it. I, I want to help you. I don't want to be the one to put the fire out. I've been under much stress about it, praying God help me during these days. And, uh, and you pray God to help me during these days. The Bible said in verse number 8, Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle, the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Our Heavenly Father, I'm grateful tonight for this blessed privilege to stand here. Lord, to be in this part of the country, these mountains over here in, in, we, in eastern Tennessee and uh, south uh, western Virginia. I pray God you'd help me tonight. I pray God you'd fill me with the Holy Ghost from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. It's my desire to please you. And Lord, I stand tonight, and these people are no strangers to old-time religion. And I stand where flesh has failed many men. And, and, and Lord, I stand where flesh has failed me. And so tonight, I yield myself to you to be a vessel. Give me backbone to say everything that I ought to say. Give me boldness and courage. And then I pray for discernment and wisdom beyond my experience not to say anything that would bring glory 
and honor to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray now your blessings upon this church. I commend them, Lord, and, and I know you've put your approval on these two weeks of meeting. And have your way as we seek out the Lord and His direction. Fill us and use us in a day of adversity, in a day of obstacle, in a, a day of apostasy. Help us to stand and having done all to stand. Well, we ask it in Jesus' name and may long live old-time religion until you come. Amen. And you can be seated. Thank God for the Word of God. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Verse 8. I want to just preface my message tonight by saying it's always been since Eden to present day Christendom, God's plan to dwell with His people. Now mind you, listen to me, when there wasn't but two people on the earth, every evening, the Bible said in Genesis, at the cool evening, God would come down in the Garden of Eden, when there wasn't but two people on earth, Adam and Eve, and He'd go down there and He'd say something like this, Eve, how'd it go today? That's in the originals, amen? That's in that Masoretic text. He'd say, Eve, how'd it go? And He already knew how it went. He'd say, Adam, come here a minute. How'd your day go, Adam? And he already knew how Adam's day went, but he desired that communion. Now, now, don't feel, you know, extra privileged or nothing, but he still desires that. I mean, we ought, to, we ought to right there take about ten minutes and just run around this building and throw him red hymn books in the air and say, praise God, God wants to meet with me. God's chosen and all of the... All of the mediums that he could have used to communicate the message of the gospel to a lost and dying world. He's chosen the frailty of flesh. He's using us to get the job. He wants to commune with us. He desires fellowship with us. And, and I'm excited about that. And, and in this text we know they're exiting Egypt and here's a tabernacle, a temporary dwelling place. It's no temple. It's not a, a New Testament temple, a body, but some things uh, and I'm not going to be able tonight to exhaust all of the, the typology of this of this tabernacle but I want to give an overview of some things tonight that I think will help you basically tonight and, and I'm not going to exhaust it I'm just going to touch on some stuff I want you to listen real good it'll help you now some of you right now I'm preaching to three groups of people I'm preaching to a crowd that's hungry that's saying now, I want some of this you're already, you already, you come in here wanting it. I'm preaching to a crowd that's carnal, that's saying, I'm here because my wife made me come. And, hey amen, I just don't really care nothing much about being here. But I'm here because the preacher's going to call me and make me feel bad. And then I'm preaching to some lost people, natural-minded people, that, that you just said, I don't even know what I'm here for. Are y'all listening to me? And so two-thirds of this crowd may not like a bit of this, but there's a third of here wanting something. And the rest of you may get something by accident while we're here tonight. Amen. In that tabernacle, stay with me now, there was three basic divisions. There's a place called the outer court. Say outer court with me. That took up the volume, the majority of that tent, that tabernacle. Wasn't so pretty on the outside. It's dyed red badgered skins. It wasn't so beautiful on the outside, but it was all on the inside of the tabernacle that made it so special. This outer court was a place where... Uh, I believe typifies Jesus meeting sinners where they are. I'm, I'm excited tonight. I can't get over the fact that I was one day lost as a ball in high weeds. I was John 3 condemned already because I not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. But you hath he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sins. I'm glad, praise God, behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And I'm glad tonight I don't want to get over the fact that Jesus met me when I was a sinner. I didn't have to get better to get saved. I got saved to get better. And I believe this outer court typifies where Jesus does His work. Then there's a holy place. If you study the tabernacle, this holy place is, I believe, where the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, does His work. There's a table of showbread, 12 loaves. There's a lampstand, a candlestick, a picture of the illuminating uh, work of the Holy Ghost. He lightens the Word. He gives us the light on the Word. And then there's an altar of incense, a place of praise and thanksgiving. And that's what happens in the holy place. I believe a picture of New Testament church Christianity. 
I don't think you could argue with me. You go just looking at that stuff and you'll have to agree when we get through. Now watch me. And that's where the Holy Ghost does His work. You learn things over here that you'll never learn in the outer court. You'll see things. That's the only light in the whole tabernacle is found in the holy place. So you got what over here? Got out of court, you got what here? Holy place. And then you got what the Bible calls the holiest. Over here is the holiest. We're going to make this the holiest. Everybody watch this over here. This is the holiest. There's the candle. Here's the holiest. Watch this. This holiest right here is the place where, uh, where Jehovah God is. Over here, you find the power of God. You find in this place the presence of God. You find the provision of God. All that's found in this holy place. There's an ark of a covenant here. And, and there, there's a mercy seat, a place where the atonement's made over here. And there's things, this is where God, this is where God is. Amen. Now, now listen to me. That's where I want to get to. My desire as a Christian, now understand Hebrews says we are a priesthood. We're made a royal priesthood. We're a royal, how many knows we're a royal priesthood? And the same pattern, the same way that that high priest once a year went from that outer court to the holy place into the holiest, that same pattern, that same way is exactly how the child of God in New Testament 21st century Christendom is going to get where God is. God's immutable. He's an unshakable God. Uh, he's a steady God. Uh, he's a steadfast God. Uh, he's an always the same God. Uh, he's a yesterday, uh, today, and forever the same God. Hey, I'm telling you, Malachi 3, 6, uh, said, I'm the Lord, uh, and I change not. Uh, therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Uh, the Bible said, Jesus Christ, the same uh, yesterday, uh, today, and forever. And the way to get to God has not changed. You're going to find out, listen to me, if you're going to get over here and see what God can do, that's where I want to live. Now I want to say something, Brother Tread Treadway, I, Treadway, I don't believe I'm there now, but I want to be. I don't believe I'm there, but I'll say this, I have been there before. And if you've ever been in the presence of God, I'm talking about a tangible manifestation of the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. You're going to always want it. And th there's a difference between the crowd that has been and hasn't been. Let me illustrate and I'll go to preaching. Wasn't too long ago we had a group, had a, had a, a singer, and I, and I respect this man highly. He sang with a quartet for years, well-known quartet in our circles. And he's now doing uh, solo work. And he came and he had, he had a few tapes, and I don't even like tapes. That's my preference, but... Uh, but just because of who he was, I let him use him. Because man, I looked to him as a as a as a as a, a, a in high regards, and because it was who he was, I let him, and he and he performed, and he did good. He sang a song about it, still the blood. Y'all know that. And everybody in our church, our, our church, Middle Tennessee Baptist Church, knows big woods from brush. They know saw logs from saplings. Somebody say amen. And 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 they like the lyrics. And when he got through singing, I mean, he knew how to do his mic. And, He'd been watching him gate their homecoming tapes and hey Amen. And when he got through, our people said, hey Amen. Hallelujah. They were Amen in the words to the song. Just about the time I went to preach, a trio of ladies from Sand Mountain, North uh, Sand Mountain, Alabama come walking through the back door. And I said, Sister Patsy, could y'all come up here and sing one? And here they come waddling down, run over white kid tennis shoes, had them, had them smocks for blouses, faded out blue jean skirts. Is everybody listening? No accompaniment. No microphone. Sister Patsy stepped up and said, There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No one else could heal all our soul's diseases. And about that time, the power of God fell in that place. 
And an hour later, we're still shouting it out, coming to the altar, what the Yankees call a spontaneous altar call. Somebody say amen. Y'all listening? The difference was, and I noticed, I believe God gives his men to serve, but I watched that performer as this trio began to sing, and, and, and they had nothing appealing about them. No glamour. No, 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 no bling. No, no diamonds. And, and, and I watched him, and it's as if he was spiritually scratching his, his head, thinking, what's the difference? I'm going to tell you the difference. That trio had been over in here. That trio doesn't got over in here. Hey, you get over here and it's going to change you. Amen. They've been over. I, I desire for my wife to get in there. I desire for my three daughters to get in there. I, I desire for my son to get over in there and live in there. I, I desire for our deacon board, Brother Jamie, uh, to get over in there and live in there. I, I desire for our musicians, Brother Johnny, to live over in there. I, I desire for our Sunday school teachers. I, hey, I desire, uh, hey, for my, for all bus workers uh, and soul winners to get over in yonder. And I like, I desire them to get over. Uh, hey, it'll make a difference. But you can't just get over there. That's what's trying to happen now. Some kind of an instant gratification. Something for nothing. We all know when it's not on it. We all know when it's missing. We're trying to shortcut it and fast forward it and, and manufacture some man-made power. Let me say, that man-made power don't last that long, friend. Yeah, man. That's a perpetual power over there. Now here's how we get there. You listen fast, we'll go home. Number one, it starts over in this outer court. You've got to go through the outer court first. The outer court pictures a place of sacrifice. Everybody say sacrifice. Here they brought their best. Watch me. They didn't bring some limping lamb in. They didn't bring some old bullock with one horn knocked off. They didn't bring some turtle dove with a wing and feathers missing. I'm telling you, that sacrifice had to be perfect. It had to be, it had to be valuable. I, I mean, it had to be the best. Our churches today, uh, and I'm telling you, over here in this part of the world, I've never seen such an apostasy going on. A bunch of words on the wall, a bunch of come, come as you are and leave as you was. Somebody help me. I've never seen such a compromise. This place used to be known as a beacon for the old time religion. God help, you can't find an old fashioned church over here. Somebody say amen. Hey, it's a place of sacrifice. It's going to cost you something. We want something real easy. We want to shorten our services, call off Sunday night. Hey, man, y'all know what they do. Now they have cell groups on Sunday night. That sounds like a prison ministry to me. Somebody say amen. Hey, man, friend, but you sell small groups. What it is, they don't want that suffering that preaching will bring. For the world in its wisdom, do not God. Had please God through the foolishness of teaching. No. The Bible said in 2 Timothy 4, hey, it said, preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, had rebuke. Reprove, had rebuke. Reprove, had rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come. My friend, the time has come when they'll not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust. Lust is a desire for the forbidden. Lust is not always sexually connotation. Lust is a desire for the bidding. For instance, it, when our church, we bound the prom. Ain't nobody going to the prom with the church's approval on it. We have an alternative. We have a team formal in our church as an alternative to the prom. We're not going to put our approval on half-naked, dark rooms, bunch of rock music. Yeah, man. So when you bind the prom then that, that's forbidden. They don't like that. Have, so after their own lust, they heap to themselves little teachers who want to correct the preacher. Come over here to our church and you won't have to. You can go to the prom. You can, you can be half naked and sing in the choir at our church. 
We've lost a generation with that mentality. Well, at least they go to... Let me say something to you pop all grannies. Hey, quit that talk. Well, at least they go to church. First of all, if it don't say church on it, I doubt it is one. Hey, man. All this bunch of worship centers, God help. Hey, man, on the rock, oasis, all that bunch of ministries. Hey, what about church, my friend? Jesus said, upon this rock, how built my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Hey, man, the church, friend. I'm talking about the church, my friend. We want to make it easy, no suffering. No expectations. I don't guard your home at all. I have no authority at your home, sir. But I do have authority at the platform of Middle Tennessee Baptist Church. Amen. 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 There ain't no mini skirts coming up in our choir. There ain't no slits up to the belly button coming up in our choir. Amen, neighbor. Hey, I'm talking about we want it easy. No suffering. You understand they brought that they brought that sacrifice. That valuable sacrifice. They bought the best that they had. We're trying to raise money with the car washes and bake sales. I thought we took up offerings as people supposed to tithe and give offerings. I nothing nothing shames the cause of Christ more than a bunch of Christians trying to sell donuts. Amen, friend. We've cheapened. We've cheapened. Hey, we've cheap nothing, nothing. Hey, man. Hey, we've cheapened the work of God. Brought it down to the level of a cheerleading squad. Hey, man. Hey, if a shoe fits, wear it. Bless God. I come in here to preach. Hey, man. Hey, man. We've cheapened it. We're trying to bring the world church down to a worldly level. Nobody wants to sacrifice. We're trying to build our churches with spare time and pocket change. If I can fit it into my schedule, bless God, if it's the church, it ought to be your schedule. If the church is having a, a chicken fight, you ought to bring a short of roosters to it. Say amen, friend. If it's happening at a Baptist church, that's where you need to be. Amen. No suffering, make it easy. Let us out early. You can't even have a weak revival in most churches. Yeah, man. We don't want to get over there. It's a place of sacrifice. It's a place of suffering. That lamb would come, first thing that, that high priest would do, he examined that lamb. As soon as he saw, he was a good one, a valuable one. He put that head between his knees, pulled it up, and with a sharp knife, he cut his throat. Filleted him. You understand? Hide and entrails, bones and filleted meat. That turtle dove would be in the left hand. The right thumb and forefinger would take the head off that turtle dove. He'd squeeze the blood in the basin while feathers flew. Sharp instrument would behead that bullock. Y'all see suffering out here? We want everybody to like us. We, you'll never have God on your life. Hey, you'll never, you'll never live within the realm of the power of God. Hey, I'm talking about it may come for a little, 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 little temporary period, but I'm talking about that long-term presence of God that changes a community. Hey, it changes families. Hey, that changes churches. It's going to take some suffering. Papa and Granny, you better get used to it now. They're not going to endure sound dark. They're going to want you to go with them. It's about time Papa and Granny stood up. If it ever has been right, it's still right. The Bible's a book of absolutes. If it's ever been wrong, it's still wrong. I see our, our, I've, got, I've got deacons, I've got older people who they, they can't stand me preaching. It's not the teenagers can't take heart preaching. Look where they're sitting. Teenage young people love it. So, children's church people, our bus kids love preaching. It's in, it's in, it's in, well, I tell you everything. I just don't like the way he's preaching. It's not the way I'm preaching bothering you, ma'am. It's what I'm preaching is bothering you. You watching that view every morning. You got more view than you got Bible. Hey, man. Bunch of liberal Barbara Walters and out of hell. What's that black lady's name? I thought y'all know Whoopi Goober. Somebody say amen. Hey, 
out of hell, dug up out of hell, dug up out of hell. And you have more influence of that. Your little old tattooed ankle granddaughter's got more influence over you. Look at me now. Your little effeminate necklace wearing little sodomite grandson. Hey, has got more, has got more influence over you than the God of the Bible's got over you. Yeah, man. Well, he was born that way. No, he wasn't. A dominant mother made him that way. A woman who ran her household made him that way. And a little spineless, hen-pecked husband. So we, what we need is a revival of men. And our Baptist, listen, I'm, I'm convinced if you turn a man-eating lion loose in most Baptist churches, he'd starve to death. Hey, Amen. So, is everybody listening? God, got to ask permission to say amen. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I don't, a rebellious woman at church doesn't bother me. I don't even get mad at her. I look at her husband and say, God help you. It's not the woman's fault. It's that little, little old weak potato string backbone rose water squirting pink shirt wearing husband she's got. Amen, friend. Hey, man. We don't want suffering. We want to get over there where God is and everybody like us. Oh, y'all have been over at our church last night. We had praise and worship. Let me tell you something. Appalachian Mountains Baptist people was praising and worship long before a bunch of britches wearing women came along. Hey, man! Long four hippies on the platform came along. Oh, I felt so uplifted. What you needed was the devil preached out of you. I'm so tired of these camp meetings. I'm getting sick of camp meetings. Most of these camp meetings preach all glory, happy, happy. They don't want no suffering. It won't, it, suffering, preach hard, you don't get asked back. I'm sick of evangelists trying to make friends of my people. I don't want an evangelist coming in being suave and making friends and learning all the names of my people. They don't pastor my church. I bring them in there to listen to me. I want guts on the floor, hide on the wall, and blood in the cracks. They get enough self-help watching Joel Osteen on Sunday night after church. Amen. Preaching time. We need some suffering. Amen. Want everybody to like us? We had Tim Tebow come. <laughs> Tim Tebow came. Let me just help you. Tim Tebow might be saved. But the day that he went on that football field in that NFL, he did more damage to the cause of Christ playing on the Lord's Day than all that kneeling down is going to undo. I would just say something about T-Bow. If he's here, I'd tell him. I don't mind telling him. My, my daughter wants to marry him, but he'll have to be an independent Baptist to marry my daughter. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Hey, all, that right there is just to soothe his conscience. Probably what he's doing is confessing. Lord, I shouldn't be out here playing ball on this field with these naked cheerleaders. God, I shouldn't be out here with all this beer out here, all this gambling going on. Lord, it smells like beer out here at this stadium. God, help me. I ought not be endorsing this. Forgive me for this. God, help me. He, look at me, friend. Bow up. Get glad. Jump in the floor. I was preaching it before I come, and I'll be preaching it when I leave. Hey, he did more damage to the cause of Christ the first day he played in the NFL than he could ever undo. He endorsed that all these kids think you can be a Christian and miss church on Sunday. What is he, some Seventh-day Adventist or something? Somebody say amen. I thought Sunday was the Lord's Day. You want to have it both ways, see? A double-minded man's unstable. You can't have it both ways. Y'all see it all the time, traditional and contemporary. 
traditional service early, contemporary later, because the contemporary would stayed up all night at the honky tonk. <laughs> Stay with me. Here's what we've done. Hey, we've lost we've lost a generation to, with contemporary. And here's what we've lost them to. They want this Christian rock. That's like you. That's, just, that's an oxymoron. You get a Christian rock. You have Christian prostitution, Christian bank robbing, Christian drug abuse. They don't even go together. We've lost a generation because they go on because we, they don't preach against a blessed fire thing. That crowd wouldn't preach against a snake if it was wrapped around his neck. Somebody say, "Man, that camp meeting crowd." Woo! Is everybody okay? Hey, watch this. We, we, we've lost them because on Saturday night, they go do anything they want to because they ain't going to get reproved on Sunday. So they add in the honky-tonks and they hear the real rock in the real country. And then we come in and try to, try to bribe them in on Sunday with a weakened version of it. The ones that wish they had been out there Saturday night, but they ain't good enough to go yet. As soon as they get good enough, they'll leave Sunday morning and go to beer joint on Saturday night. Stay tuned, friend. Is everybody listening? We've lost them because, we, we, you know, they can go see all naked women at some kind of a strip club. And don't get nervous. I'm not off color. He's asked me to come. Don't worry about me being off color if you've got access to the Internet at your house. Is everybody okay? They can go see all naked women at a strip club at some kind of a nasty out-of-hell club. And then they just come see half-naked women in the choir. Amen. Yeah, Amen. We've lost a generation to a cheapened version of what to get on Saturday night. Because we don't want to suffer. We're scared if we, if we make any kind of demand, any kind of expectation, well, they'll leave the church. Listen, they're leaving all the time. Listen, we're in our eighth church split right now. I've been pastoring 23 years. We've had eight church splits. I've enjoyed this one more than I have any of the previous seven. Is everybody listening? Hey, suffering precedes the glory. It's a place of sacrifice. It's a place of suffering. It's a place of sanctification. It's a place of sanctification. Now, don't come move my candle when I get through. You're not preaching this thing. I am. Somebody say, over here before you can get in that holy of holies, there's a place over here called the laver. Now, they've been out in here. They've been skinning sheep. They've been, they've been plucking feathers off of a dove. they got guts all over their hands and blood on the aprons. And they don't feel comfortable going in this holy place with feathers all over them and hair and blood because this is where the Holy Ghost is. So they don't feel comfortable. A lot of people don't feel comfortable in our church. Let me say, everybody's welcome at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church. But if you've got guts and feathers all over you, a type of sin, look at me. Hey, you ought not be comfortable at our church. What I'm saying, sir, if you've got a fifth of alcohol under your truck seat out yonder in that parking lot, look at me. You better thank God I don't know who you are. I'd call your name out. Look up in here. Hey, if you've got a fifth of whiskey under the, back at the barn, stuck somewhere at the feed box at the barn, you go down there and take a little nip, look up here at me. Hey, sir, hey, you ought not be too comfortable in here. Ma'am, if you're cheating on your husband on the Internet with some kind of a chat room talk, some kind of a hookup on the Internet with your boyfriend you knew back in high school, hey, let me tell you, you're welcome here, but bless God, you ought not be comfortable in here. Amen. And you'll never be until you go by this labor. And you got to wash up. It's a place of sanctification. I got my sins paid for out here. My sins were covered out here. An atonement was made. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ met me in my sin to save me from my sin. Now, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm convinced of this. That, that the large percentage of the people I pastor live out here. They, 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 they live, they never get this far. And if they do, they try to bypass that labor and come in and, on a Sunday. And I go to preaching and say, 
Why does he always want to preach right at me? Every time I come to church, I feel so condemned. Here's what they say. I just don't see anything wrong with it. This is what this crowd says out here all the time. I just don't see anything wrong with it. Been saved 25, 30 years, still dressed like Madonna. I, I'm not convicted of that yet. Well, you don't have to be convicted about scriptural commands. They're right whether you're convicted or not. You just need to be compliant to them. Help me. I just don't see anything wrong. But see, the reason why? Because you won't stay over here long enough for that light. See, there's a, there's a lamp stand over here. There's a candlestick. Hey, there's a candlestick over here. Is everybody listening? There's candlesticks over here. Candlesticks are, are shining a light on the Word of God. That's where those 12, look at me, those 12 loaves are. Look at me. They're, they're lined, the, the table was designed where they had to be lined six by six. Sixty-six. Long before the first word of Genesis was penned by Moses, God had already put in order a canonized Bible. Six by six, a picture of the bread. Man shall not buy bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the body. It's the bread of life. Sixty-six. Don't act like you already knew that because you didn't know that. Somebody say amen. M.R. DeHaan didn't know that one. Durbin Spears taught him that. Somebody say, man, watch up. Look up here. I'm talking about 66 and that light shines down. And when you get in there, you go to seeing things you used to couldn't see. But you got to clean up before you can feel comfortable in here. You got to go by the labor. Then you get over here. Work of the Holy Ghost. Illumination. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. I'm too tired of these Baptist colleges they scared of the. They won't even say Holy Ghost. They got to say Holy Spirit. I want to distance myself from people that scared of the Holy Ghost. I ain't running with that crowd bunch of that want to try to call him the third person of the Godhead. That's disrespectful. He's not some kind of barefoot stepchild looking for acceptance. He's no third person. He's co-equal, co-existent with God. It's God the Father, uh, and God the Son, uh, and God, and God the Holy Ghost. They're not, they're not jockeying for some kind of a position of order. They're not jealous of each other's power. Jesus identified himself with the Holy He said, if I go away, I'll send another. It's been identified as Christ in you, the hope of glory. So don't get nervous, Sunday school teacher, when the, when the, when the religious know it all says, now you shouldn't tell children to ask Jesus into their heart. Why not? He said, I won't send, I'll send another. Another means one just like me. It's, God, it's, it's co-equal, co-existent God. Don't you minimize the Holy Ghost. Because you can't, you can't have worship. A picture of the local church without the Holy Ghost. But then you got that crowd, all they want is that bread. And their deeper life. You know, you know, we just, we dive deeper. Some of, most, some, of the, some of the most boring people I know are brains. And they dive deeper and come up drier. Gnostics and all this bunch of talk. Somebody help me. I mean, and all the time trying to impress somebody with their knowledge. The, the, the light shines on the Word. And you start seeing things that you didn't see. All of a sudden, you see something wrong with it. Over here, you never did. Over here, I just don't see anything wrong with it. I'm not convicted of that yet. You never will. You never will be till you get over there and stay Sunday. They, I don't believe in counseling. Don't get nervous. People, I need to meet with you. And I'll, no, you don't. You need to come Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night for two months. If you come Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night for two months, I'll think about counseling you. So I'm telling you, preaching will do the work that a counselor can. Hey, what it is, you don't want to submit yourself to any truth. You want to go tell the preacher. You want a bunch of psychobabble. 
If you want a bunch of psycho babble, what you want a little talk and why you're this way and you was mistreated as a child. If you was born before 1960, sure you were. Somebody say amen. I got whooped with hose pipes and everything else growing up. Somebody say amen. Fan belts. I got a whooping with a fan belt. Is everybody listening? They'd bury my daddy for what he done. Amen, Fred. Talk about being abused. I don't know anybody ain't been abused raised in Georgia where I come from. Somebody say amen. What do you want, a t-shirt or something, some kind of award? I was in a church one time and the preacher messed up. Oh, join the club. Ta-da, you're a Baptist. Is everybody okay? You got to, you don't need a bunch of counseling. Hey, you need preaching. You, hey, you need preaching, 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 preaching. And that light shines on that word. And then every once in a while, not all the time, you can't live high. But every once in a while, you'll find yourself at that altar incense. That sweet smell and savor. You'll find yourself in an altar down there saying, Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you for what you've taught me today. Oh, I want to thank you for saving my precious. Thank you, Lord, for your precious blood. Lord, thank you for heaven. Oh, sweet Jesus. You'll find yourself. All that has to go together. You'll never have this part without that part. And you'll never have that part without this part. If you're going to worship me, you got to worship me in spirit and in truth. You can't pick and choose what you know, what y'all want that Burger King religion. Have it your way. What you need is Wendy's religion, old-fashioned, hot and juicy. Somebody say amen. Hey! Hey, look up here. And you got to get ready to go. Most people don't. you got to get ready to go to this place. I'm almost through. Can y'all handle some preaching? We can't have meetings because people don't know how to go to meeting. Don't get nervous. But the first thing I do on Sunday morning, don't tell Brother Roloff, is I make a pot of coffee. I got a Keurig thing. It just makes one at a time. And I drank that new, it's called uh, Nantucket Blend. Praise God. Listen, it's almost good as Winston's. Somebody say amen. It, that stuff will help you, praise. Somebody say amen. And, uh, and that Nantucket blend. And, and, and I'll drink some of that stuff and make maybe two, maybe three. Couldn't be more than that. And then I get in my truck and I head to the church. And I punch track one. And here comes Vestal Goodman, 1972 vintage. And she says, God walks the dark. He, 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 the highways and byways. And I'm going, yeah, praise God. Whoa, you better believe he does. I hit track two, and old Peg McCamey comes in. For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. For the God of the good time. And I say, yeah, praise God. I hit track three. The primitive, the primitives come on. I'm no longer an orphan. Somebody's rescued me. My clothes no longer are tattered. My family is royalty. But I'm, start, I'm starting to get ready to go to church. Hit track four. Preacher man says it's the end of time in the middle. Oh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> but a country boy can survive. Somebody say amen. <laughs> I'm living proof of that, praise God. A shotgun, a rifle, and a forehead. That ought to be in the hymn book, praise God. Y'all listening to me? Hey, some of y'all come in here fussing and fighting. You come in so carnal, been fighting all the way, cussing in front of your young'uns. And ma'am, look at me. You're never going to get over there with the attitudes you got towards your husband. 
until you submit to the God-given authority in your home, ma'am, look at me, you might as well ride in here with a broom and a black hat on and a wart on your nose. The Bible said that rebellion, rebellion, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You might as well cast a spell on somebody as disrespect your husband. And you want to come to church with that kind of mentality and get out of the parking lot. Oh, praise God, we got the victory and everything. <laughs> Lord's been so good. Thank God I've been praying this week. <laughs> hey, man, got your Bible. Your Bible's up there. Been laying, in, been laying in the back of the truck since last Sunday. Got dog ears on it. <laughs> Son's baked your Bible. You got to... Get it fixed before you can go in the house of God. Bend it down so you halfway look like you... Help me. No wonder, no wonder, no wonder you're not comfortable in here. Where is the crowd that was here yesterday morning? Where are they? I mean, they can't take but so much. They can't take but so much. Is everybody listening? That's smoke that goes up. This place will make a difference in your life. I believe that the New Testament church, watch me now, watch me. She's leaving, but she's okay. Watch this, everybody watching me. I believe the New Testament church ought to be the nucleus of every Christian's life. It's the hub of all activity. Every, every spoke of your existence ought to hook back into the church. If, that's, if, any, if any aspect of your life does not have some channel back to the church, it's, I don't care. Look at me, sir. Lodge wearing, ring wearing, bunch of hood wearing, clansmen. Look up in here. Hey, if it don't tie back to the local New Testament church, it's straight out of hell. Don't, hey, you don't scare me with your bunch of, all that bunch of rubbing knuckles. Look up in here. Is everybody okay? I'm preaching what God's laid on my heart, sir. If y'all don't like it, you can lump it, bump it, bless God, jump it. Amen? Hey, man. Divided loyalty. I don't even join the Coon Hunters Club. Amen. I'm a member of the church. I'm a member of the church. I'm not a member of any other blessed fired thing. Hey, I'm a member of the church. It tickles me. Kids start growing up. As long as your kids is real little like this, it's easy to be in church. Let's start to get up. Let's start playing ball. That they'll, well, now we can't make it on Wednesday night. Johnny's got a makeup game. And they'll say, what they want to do is make it sound spiritual. And they'll say, well, you know how we, we've always taught our son whatever he begins, he ought to finish. Don't that sound spiritual? And then I always go, yeah, what about when he joined the church? If it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Hey, man, that's a bunch of junk. My son, my son may have to come in with his football pads on. He's the quarterback. Is everybody okay? Hey, they may practice right till seven, but he's gonna be at church. He may come in with his with mud on his knee pads. Look up in here. But bless God, if he ain't here at seven, I, we ain't. They gonna start the service without me. I'm just gonna call off practice. Somebody help with a flatbed, four wheel drive. I'll pull on the field, lock it in four wheel drive, and make the turf fly. Somebody say amen. Is everybody okay? This is where it's at. What's going on in here is where it's at. Bunch of Bible schools and Christian schools like tails wagging a dog. Amen, friend. It's the local church upon this rock I build my church. It's about the church. We're not in the home age. Don't get nervous. Look at me. You're not more spiritual because you got more kids. Don't get nervous. Your preacher's got three more than me. My quiver filled at four. Really, it filled at three. But we didn't have a quarterback or a point guard. And I said, we're going to leave. We're going, we're going to get. My wife said, God, help us to have a boy. Have y'all listening? We might have had 14 if we hadn't had a boy. Somebody say amen. The Duggars ain't spiritual. They're not spiritual because they got 40, 11 kids. They told Adam to go replenish the earth. Somebody, you got to write it. Is everybody okay? Don't get nervous. We get lopsided sometimes. We get off base, and that becomes the, dog, the tail wagging the dog. Hey, man, watch this. You're not spiritual because you're skinnier than I am. Bunch of health food nuts. You ain't got a bit of Bible for that. 
You go around here trying to sell vitamins all the time, propagating barley green. Look up in here. Hey, you're just, you're just, you're just a revelation of the end times. The Bible said they'll forbid from marriage and abstain from eating meats. My favorite verse is Acts 10, 13, kill and eat. Amen. I say kill it and grill it. Somebody say amen. I'm going to eat everything on the hog. Amen. I, we eat everything but the squeal, and if you could put some barbecue sauce on that, I'd take a bite of it. Somebody say amen. Amen. Sow meat, hog's head, cheese, whatever you want to call it. If it's got enough garlic, I'm for it. Somebody say amen. Hey man, sir, but they want to be spiritual, make that, they're, they're just messing. It ain't about that. That's not what we're about. It ain't no caffeine and refined flour. i never seen such a bunch of, I mean, calling herself fun of it, that's all they talk about. Let the world die and go to hell. Let my neighbors die and go to hell because I can't drink Coca-Cola. You're not spiritual coach. Somebody asked me, they said, don't you hate being fat? I said, yeah, but I hate being hungry worse. <laughs> Amen. It's about the church. He gave this command to the church. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. You got a right to your preference and I got a right to mine. Amen. Don't you bow up on me right here. Hey, I don't know all about the Bible, but the parts I know I know real good and I'll stay here a while. Somebody say amen. I'm trying to get over here where God is. But you can't get over there unless you go through the outer court. And you got to go through the holy of holiest. And then somewhere along the way, you make this place the central hub of activity. And God will call you out to the side and say, come here, I want to show you something. Now I want to tell you right here, it's personal. I, w I wish I could say to my wife, Tracy, come on in here with me a minute. But, but he went in by himself. This is a personal experience. I'm not talking about an extra biblical revelation. I'm not talking about unintelligible tongues. I'm not talking about a second working of grace. I'm talking about the veil was rent. See, it wasn't that way before Jesus died. But he made a, he, he, the veil was rent and access has been made into this holiest. And none of us probably are living there. I'm going to be honest. I don't know y'all, but I know people. But we can live here. It, it, I'm telling you, probably ain't our person in here. I, I don't think I'm living there. But God only knows, man, right now how bad I want to get over there. Man, I want to get in here. And I don't want to just come in and leave, Johnny. I want to stay here. It's not a one-time yearly appointment for us. We can dwell in here. That I may dwell among my people. Dwelling is a permanent, a permanent abode. To dwell, it's a permanent. You can live with God. You can live within His power and presence. Does anybody else want that? Some of what you've done these last 14 nights is, pre is, is, is paving the way to this. He'll say, now come on, I'll show you something. And you're going to look over and first thing you're going to find out over here, this is what you're going to find out. This is what it boils down to. God loves me. Because you're going to see a, 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 a brazen altar. you got an altar here where the atonement was made, where the blood was poured. Y'all understand? Praise God. Now inside that ark, wherever it may be, inside that ark is broken tablets of the law. You ever been in church and feeling pretty good and the devil remind you of your past? I can't go to church, but I, I've been sitting on the platform. The devil tried to talk me out of being saved. Amen. But see, uh, right there beside them broken tablets is a is a brazen. I'm talking about it, it's it's a pool of blood. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. 
and sinners like me and you plunged. And we learned that he loved us. Now, I'm going to tell you something. People that ever get here one time, they'll never have to do this. I, I deal with this every week of my life. Listen to this. Watch this. Over here, this is what this crowd says, April. Brother Tony, can I talk to you? That's, I've been doubting my salvation. I'm not sure if I'm saved. I don't know if I meant it. I don't know if I repented enough. I don't know if I said the right words. And they, they never, because they live out here. You're not going to get assurance. You're never going to feel peace of your salvation living out in this carnal thing. You're going to have to spend some time in here and then get over here with God. And he's, he's going to show you, wait a minute. It ain't about what you prayed. It ain't about, it ain't about what you, it, I died. For, see his blood? It covers those broken tablets. And all that you've done, I loved you for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. You learn over here, God. You won't die. I've never, I've never since I've, I'm talking about, thank God Curtis Hudson, my daddy, he had a conducive spirit at Forest Hills Baptist Church where we could get in here on occasion. He knew how to mind the Holy Ghost. He'd sing some dead choir song. He'd keep singing until it got good. <laughs> sang another. One. Been a many. We changed hymn books one time. We used to, we always used church hymnal, old Church of God hymnal. It's okay, everybody. Just take a deep breath. If we could, if we could work like the Camelites, believe like the Baptists, and sing like the Church of God, we would have something. Somebody say Amen. <laughs> A millionaire bought a new hymn book one time, put it in the building. Daddy kept it three weeks. That thing was so dead, it was dry as cracker juice. Amen? Amen. And, and, and he'd, he'd have to get up and sing other songs that we all knew by memory. Because it wasn't in any... It, hey, I like that number six, I want to know more. Somebody say amen. amen. I still, I don't, I, don't, I don't get embarrassed singing that. I sing it with pride. Amen. He'd get up there and have to... Have, but he knew, how to, he, knew how to, he knew how to make it conducive. See, because if you've been in there, there's going to be a noticeable difference. That smoke, it fills this room. Watch what I'm talking about. That smoke is vented to go in this room. He walks into this, this, this holiest. And wasn't too long ago. I'm going to get back over here. Can, y'all say, can I say something right here? Wasn't too, we've always burnt wood all my life. My daddy was particular, and he burnt white oak and hickory. Hickory popped, but he liked to hear it pop. And he, that's all we burnt. We, we, we didn't live. We, we, I was born in Georgia. We had fat lighter pine stumps we used to use for kindling. And now in Middle Tennessee, we use cedar. There ain't no pine over. Is everybody listening? But we, we burnt wood all my life. When my daddy died, first thing mama said, April, was, Get this buck stove out of here. And we went over and gave her some gas logs. But about two winters ago, y'all know how cold it's been getting? If y'all notice this global warming's about to freeze me to death. We've been, we've been walking around spraying aerosol cans in our home just to warm it up. Somebody say amen. <laughs> On Earth Day, we, we cut down five trees and burned four or five tractor tires in our house. Praise God to celebrate Earth Day. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Man, it's so cold. And, and, and I, I, I'd started a fire in September. And I come to church one night, Mama said, <laughs> She said, you started your fire, didn't you? I said, well, yeah. She said, I can smell it all. I'm going to tell you, you, you live around this, people are going to notice something different about you. See, smoke will, make, smoke will make your eyes water. When's the last time you wept over your own condition? Much less your neighbors going to hell. We better not worry about them neighbors to worry about our own condition. Amen. That's what we, what you, and he said, come over, I'm going to show you something right here. And right over here, you find out he loves you. I want to thank God I found that out. The crowd over yonder will never know that until they get in here with him. You'll find out not only does God love, I'm almost through, y'all been good listeners, but God lives. There's a rod in that ark of the covenant. It's Aaron's rod. It blossomed, bloomed, and budded. Picture of life. You've got to understand God lives. He ain't dead. God's not dead. He's still alive. His power still, I'm telling you, he's got a, he's got a perpetual power. And Now watch this. You got to learn. I, all my life over in here, I'm, I'm trying to hurry, Brother Brian. 
Over in here, sometimes when I get in a hurry and I get longer, that's crazy, ain't it? I try to hurry and it makes me longer. Let me stop and drink some water and I may finish this thing. My sermons are like a fat woman crawling through a barbed wire fence. A few more points and I'll be through. Just... <sighs> Amen. Watch this now. Hey. I learned some things over here from other I learned some things from, from Lester Roloff. I heard that he could do stuff for I heard he could do things from Mays Jackson over here. I heard he could do things for B.R. Lakin over here. And I heard their stories. They encouraged me. But you know what? When you get over here, you'll find out he can do it for you. Wasn't long ago. One of them bad, bad snow times. and I mean, it was bad. Ice, ice was so bad that the, the ice had come in the snow and we couldn't even open our front doors. And all the deacons had come out there early. It's not all of them, several of them. You know people on them kind of days, it's real snowy. There's only, there's only three kind of people that come to church. Them that, won't, that really love God. Them that won't you, make you think they love God. And then them that want to try their four-wheel drive out on the truck. And I pulled up in there and, and asked some deacons. They, they was out there taking odds on how many was going to be at church. It just depressing me. I bet you ain't going to hire nobody this morning. I, you know, I'm going, ah. Ain't nobody going to be here. And I said, oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, fellas. I'm going to go out here to the, to the road. When they come in, we had one canopy that you could drive through that had not got iced over. Everybody, everybody still here say amen. amen. And, and so I said, I want y'all to do valet parking. We're going to come through. We're going to have one service, no Sunday school, one service. And when they get here, I'm going to send everybody and y'all park them. And I said, I'm going to send them. And so I was out there and I was praying, oh, God, help us. I mean, we don't have a budget at our church. We spend everything every week. I mean, I'm not joking to you. There's one of our deacons there. We spend everything. That way we don't have to argue over the money. But the problem with that is if we don't have, you know, service, I don't get paid. Somebody say Amen. And my wife can't go to Walmart, and that is an issue. <laughs> and uh, so I just pray, and God help us. Yeah. And I was in the car, God, God help. Oh, God, I was in that truck, oh, God, do something today. God, show. by the time I heard somebody knock on the window, and it was this new convert. Now, don't get offended at me, but he was a Yankee. God help us. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Tony. I can't stand that. <laughs> Look at me. It ain't and it ain't you guys. It's y'all. The plural of y'all is all y'all. The possessive y'all is at y'all's. <laughs> Over here in East Tennessee and in this part of the world is Yunzes. Somebody say amen. We, it, y'all, you guys is excess baggage brought down from the northern invasion. Somebody say amen. <laughs> and and he said he said pastor. And I, he said, can I talk a moment? And I said, look, man, I'm in here with God right now. I'm in here with God. And he, he said, well, I don't want to disturb you, uh, but, but I've got a question about our Jesus first offering. That was back in November. I said, look, dude. I said, that was back in November. He said, I know, but uh, my wife and I couldn't give at that time. I said, look, man, I'm in here with God right now. He, he said, but anyway, Pastor, he reached in his pocket and pulled out a wad of money about that big with a red rubber band around it, big enough to choke a mule down. I, I said, hold on, God, just a minute. <laughs> I said, come on in. Come on in, you guys. Ha. <laughs> Hey, guess what God done? He showed up in my life. I, I need to hear that preaching, but I need some for myself. He loves, he lives, and then there's a piece of manna in that ark. That ark of God. I don't know where it's at tonight. They say the Muslims have got it. It is somewhere. I don't know where it's at. Nobody knows. Act like they know. Nobody knows. But there is an ark of the covenant. I mean, believe there's an ark of the covenant. And wherever it is right now, there's still a piece of manna in that thing. You understand manna? Now, now, obviously, it had to be identifiable. 
And here's what I'm preaching. I'm through. He loves us. You find out He loves you. You find out He lives, but you find out He lasts. He lasts. He, he, this piece of manna had not lost its identity through all those years. If it, where, where it's at right now, it's just as fresh as it fell out yonder in the wilderness. Just as fresh. I come home not long ago. Now, we come home at night, me and Johnny, we get in late. And I went in there, opened the cupboard to get, I was going to make a tomato sandwich. Man, I felt something when I said that. Oh! With mayonnaise and salt and pepper on it. And I reached up there and opened, opened the cupboard door, and I reached into that bread bag, and, and, and I mean, and I said, How? How? And Tracy said, What is it? And I opened that bread, and there was a piece of mold on the bottom of that bread bag. And it, I mean, it had my hair looked like gross. Somebody help me, purple, black. It looked like a rat was in that bag. Help me, somebody. And I thought there's a rat in that bread bag. It looked like a rat girl. Because it, it, you give it time, it'll lose its identity. You leave bread in a bread bag long enough, I'm telling you, it won't look like bread. But that man is still identifiable. Because it lasts. I just want to say, if you ever get over in here, and get, I'm talking about if you, if you ever get these children out here, and just they don't have to get much of it. If they ever get just a little bit of this, contemporary will never do for them. You'll find out you don't need any new and improved. You'll find out the King James is the Word of God. You won't have to have a Queen James. Look at me. You won't have to have a NIV. You'll find out, man, it's enough. It lasts. I'm going to tell you, if it was easy to get here, we'd be there. And meetings like you're in and the spirit that you're feeling right now would, would be continual. This atmosphere, man, I was in that prayer room. Wasn't that a sweet atmosphere? We go to prayer room. It, it's not, I'm, not, I'm not down on my people, but it, it's not always like that in our prayer room. It's dead sometimes. Man, we was in there. People just have. Man, we it was. It, we were about to have a meeting in the prayer room tonight. Good spirit in there. You could have that all the time, but you don't want to pay your dues out here. You, you, you don't want to sacrifice. You don't want to suffer. You 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 want all your family to accept you. I came to put mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. That's what Jesus said. I didn't come to bring peace but a sword. You're going to find out old-time religion is going to divide your family sooner or later. And you'll either go with that other crowd, Papa and Granny, or you're going to stay anchored in here. And the day you give in and go to the little Christmas play over there, and they're reading out of another Bible, I, if I went to the Christmas play, I'd, give, I'd stay over there long enough till they opened some kind of Bible that didn't do it in King James, and I'd get up and leave so fast to let them know where I stood, that it would make that would make my daughter-in-law's eyes roll in her head. It'd make my son-in-law go into a coma. And I'd say something like this, I ain't listening at this. But see, it ain't easy because you ain't willing to do it. That's why you're not going to stay over there. You're going to find something wrong with the church all the time, undermining the authority. It ain't this is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong. You, you, you're, never going, you're never going to find your place here. And you're never going to be invited over there. But if we'd be willing to go through the channel, we can get where God is. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You've been good listeners. Let's